Greetings, my fellow crypto traders and investors. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin at $47,000. Yesterday, we were sitting at forty-four, and I explained to you guys, this thing is going to go, and uh, it is on its way. So it's in our sell zone. Do we sell? Do we just blindly sell? Well, guys, this uh, Bitcoin breakout imminent um, headline that I'm using is kind of to that question, are we going to break out or should we sort sell, short sell the market today? So today's stream, I'm going to talk to you guys about that as well as I've got two alts that I want to share with you that might be making a lot of multipliers in 2024. Before I do that, guys, drop me a comment. Tell me where you're tuning in from. These streams are always live. And, uh, and then that's it. Let's get into this. Okay, so Bitcoin. Uh, as you can see, had an insane push to the upside. And uh, the biggest statement that I kind of want to throw out, to throw you away is if we can close above 50K, say by the end of today or the end of the week, this will really, because what we need to do is we really need to get into this scene over here. If we can close above that supply wave that runs over there, Things then opens the door for us to go to about 56, potentially a few more days, a few more weeks, 58K even. And that is really bullish. So for those that were doubting whether this market is bullish, I think this is evident enough that there is a lot of potential sitting in the market. Now, if you look at the fear and greed index, obviously everybody's turning greedy today. But remember, we were greedy when that wasn't bullish. And that's the key to this thing. You know, you need to buy when it's down. For everybody tuning in, I see Garth from Plate. We've got Adrian from Long Beach, California. Uh, Crypto Bunny, hello to you, buddy. And my, I think it's Miami, Grand Rapids, Miami, US. Kevin, uh, good day to each and every one of you. Okay, so it's going to be a busy day in crypto fast. Now, when we look at Bitcoin on the CME, why, 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 why would I say get about 50, 58K? Well, simply put, we're trying to get to 52 why? Because of 52, this is where our last giant CME gap is sitting. Now, where's the resistance level above that? Oops, up there, 56. Or if you want to draw it a little bit higher to the supply zone, 57. And if you want to include the supply zone, 58. And that's where I'm thinking price is going to go to. So if we can get hit on this CME gap over here, price is going to want to try and fight around this selling point. So there's a lot of work. It's still a far end from where we are now. I mean, there's a lot that needs to happen. This thing needs to turn, you know, turn crazy. But remember, there is talks of a China spot BTF. Now that there is a, a US spot BTF. And I, probably that is why this rally is pushing so hard. And it brings me back to the narrative that I explained to you guys is when we look at Bitcoin and we look at this market and um, we look at what this chart is showing us, and this is the Wall Street cheat sheet. Sometimes the best information is the free ones. Why? Because what it teaches us is that when we're in the beginning of the bull cycle, this is the disbelief rally. People don't believe in the fact that this thing can go ballistic because they've just freshly off the market that did this to them wrecked them so now think about where we are now we're at 58k level we at the same level that where people were here we at the same level that people were here now tell me this not all fifty thousand dollars or forty seven thousand dollars are created equal correct because around this stage people were enjoying the fact that it's there and if we're in the disbelief rally at this stage people are not trusting this thing and they're probably not enjoying it because they're not the ones making money on this now that said, BTC, I see the higher targets. Now, where does this bring us to with the alts? Show to you guys that Bitcoin is breaking its mid-range. So where is it going to want to try and go? It's going to go to the upper end of the range. And if we look at that same analysis on the total two, we're still below that range. So Bitcoin's already broken in. The market cap has broken in its previous bull cycle range. But look at where the total two is. Look at where total three is. So your smaller alts have not yet seen any income or, or any influx of funds. And your uh, bigger alts, neither. You know, so, so these all still need to play catch up to Bitcoin. So there's a lot of potential that's coming our way. Now, what needs to happen for that potential to come our way? Well, simply, 
we need the dominance to stop trending up at the moment the dominance is messing so Said saying why are ETH and the alts lagging well simply put the dominance at this stage is not in their favor it is breaking out it changed its character breaking down it changed its character so if, let's make open the dominance real quick you can see that the dominance has been moving up as Bitcoin's moving up. So that's why Ethereum and the old is moving. But now, what are we doing? We're breaking trend. We had divergence. We broke down. And at the moment, the big question mark is, is the dominance going to find some sort of a lateral range, define it, and start moving in this? Or is the dominance going to start doing this? And, and for that, we don't really have an answer at this stage. I think one other thing to keep in mind while we look at the dominance and while we, the question is, what will why is ETH not moving? ETH has got about two months for its potential spot ETF approval. And that will then bring investor money into ETH. Remember, the whole narrative at this stage is investors are buying Bitcoin. So that's where the hype is. Once that's Ethereum then money and the attention will shift. That's why yesterday's stream, please go look at yesterday's stream, was dedicated to the idea that once this happens, Ethereum will really start accelerating. But okay, now you think you're late maybe because Bitcoin is going crazy. Um, let's talk, I want to show you something interesting. Now, this chart is BTC from its inception. That's all the data that I could find from Bitstamp. Okay, so Bitcoin was created somewhere over here and it had its chart and then boom, and then it had its first halving. Okay, and it's around the first halving that things went ballistic and it created after the first halving its first halving all time high. Same played out with the second halving. We had the second halving all time high and the third halving and the third halving all time high. Now, using this kind of big macro view, macro view on things what this does is it helps us to keep our feelings fears in check because for a lot of people things were scary and uh maybe it's going to crash down and now it's rallying and you know it's it's this roller coaster it tires you out so you can start making stupid decisions now, if you look at this halving to halving date and you put a time-based fib on this Basically, what you can see, the first one is really hard to identify. But if you look at this first, the after the first halving, and you go to your FIB level, this is the time-based FIB, that one, okay? If you look at them, and you just go and you put the settings in 382.618, okay? What you will find is around the 382, it tops out, around the 618, it bottoms. Go to the second halving to third halving, top, bottom, third halving to what is the next halving? It's on its way, it's two months away, top, bottom. So now you can see that every time Bitcoin goes past the halving and you apply the time for base, it's around the 382 in time and around the 618 in time where the tops and the bottoms occur, which means this is the green zone. It's a green light for us to be risk, to have, what's the right word? To be risk advanced or, or, or um Pro risk, you'd say, have your money in the markets, it's going to do well. That's the idea there, okay? And um, now, looking at the alts, the question, if we get to the alts, when does the real alts come? Now, if we go to the previous cycle, when did we get Solana? Solana launched an Axie Infinity gaming launch just a month before the Harley. okay? And it's within that time that the real big Solana and Axie money was made. Okay, if we go to after the halving, you had Sand, you had Shiba Inu, all these, you had Metaverse and Meme Coin launches, and you had that entire halving streak where people were recording 10,000 Xs. Okay, a hundred dollars. There was instances where a hundred dollars turns to a million dollars in that time. So, where we are now, before the halving, we're not even at the point where new projects that's launching now is going to see that, uh, you know, new projects is launching now. We potentially now only see that move. So are you early? Yes, you're early. Which brings me to the two alts that I want to share with you guys. We're within this Goldilocks zone around the halving date where projects that launch here is going to start getting catapulted with this real big investor money. So all eyes 
are on Bitcoin at the moment. The dominance is in Bitcoin's favor. But it's only if we go and have a look at the halving three, it's only after the halving where the dominance broke down the last time around. So now look, look at the date. It's the 1st of May 2020 where this line is just drawn. Now let's go back to the dominance and let's bring back Bitcoin. When was the first halving? There's the May. It's the orange line. And it, I'll take away the RSI. Let me just bring Bitcoin. So now I've got Bitcoin at the top. And I've got the dominance at the bottom. There's the line. So let's just get this thing zoomed in. Let's get this thing zoomed in. So it's at that point, at the halving point, when Bitcoin went ballistic in price, as you can see there, that's when the dominance started breaking down. And it's close to the top when Bitcoin started stalling out, when the real alt season kicked in. Now, is this the first time it played like this? No. If we go over to the previous bull cycle, it's also at the top when Bitcoin stalls out, when the real alt season starts kicking in. So there's still so much ahead of us. So if you feel discouraged today, you feel like you maybe missed out on the move, guys, Bitcoin is not even started yet. We're not even crossed the halving line and that line shifted. Let's just move that thing there. So at the moment, the date is the 20th of April. That is the halving date for BTC. So if you look at this now, you look at this, uh, you take this information. When I'm going to bring you the next altcoins, then you're now going to see, okay, right, there's so much still to be made. There's so many multipliers. Okay, now let's quickly take a quick recap. We're 11 minutes in. A quick recap into our alts. Before I do that, though, a friendly reminder, guys, if you like the content, if you find it helpful and you're profitable off the content, give me a like. Share the, the videos with somebody you care that's in crypto. And uh, leave me a comment at the bottom of the video. I always love to reply to your comments. Do me that solid. Okay. And um, let's quickly head over to your comments. It's consistent DCA. Yes, buddy. That is the key. You need to be consistent with this. DCA, yes. Consistent dollar cost averaging can play out. But you need to then understand the, the pros and the cons of the strategy. And I would love to dive into this now, but then I'm going to go off topic of what I want to share with you guys. So Crash, stay tuned. I'm going to give you another video in the future on DCA, which is going to blow your mind, I promise you on that. Okay. Um, now, <laughs> let's quickly have a look at Ethereum. So this was the ETH buy zone I shared with you guys. I'm going to hit this on the data. So there's the ETH buy zone. Ethereum is above the 23.6. So what do you think? What do you dream for? You dream for higher highs. That's it. Okay. Solana. The Solana buy zone I was so skeptical about. It held. Look at what's happening. Solana is off to its TP zone. So we're good with Solana. Let's have a look at AVAX. AVAX missed the original imbalance, but it got the entry on the institutional candle to a T. And look at where AVAX is. Off to $53. AVAX about flying, my friends. Okay, Matic. Now, when Ethereum gets its spot ETF, between brackets, when or whatever the, the thing is, if that happens, your Matic's going to take off. This thing's going to fly. And I showed you guys this. So if you want to see what I mean by this, go to yesterday's video, and you'll be able to see what I mean by Matic and how high it's going to go. Bitcoin Cash. Guys, I gave you this Bitcoin Cash entry at 210. Look at how this thing is running. I still see Bitcoin Cash going to about 240. Okay, Making that higher high, sweeping these highs. Insane gains there. XRP, I, I gave you this big swing. So this is the big picture for XRP. And the ideal buy zone is probably going to be around there or if it wants to shake out there. Now, funny enough, everything is bullish as hell and look at what XRP is going through. It's not ready. That's why that buy zone is there. So it's going to come. But now's the time to have a look at that. Okay. Let's quickly have a look at DOT, guys. So DOT's flying as well. It's about breaking out. So the DOT target's moving over to about $10 a DOT. Okay. Um, let's quickly have a look at Celestia. This thing, I think, is going to go, go insane. So where are we at now? We've got another strong bearish divergence. Now, we, we, what do we do with strong bearish divergence? It's a bullish signal until the following things happen. If we lose that red line that I've got marked there, meaning from divergence to divergence, price starts trading here, then you have to worry. A good example of this is yesterday's BTC setup that I shared with you guys. Explain to you guys the following. 
If we're looking to short BTC, we had bearish divergence yesterday. Now, this is on the 15-minute time frame. If price opens and closes below this level, go short. But if price stays above this level like it is, go long. And look how long it would have gone. You would have sitting pretty right now, guys. And that is the key. So when you see things that have divergences like this, don't get discouraged or don't get fearful. You know how to navigate this. Go long. So if Celestia goes back, to about $19, it's a buy unless it starts trading below that red line. Simple as that. Okay, now, 15 minutes in, I can see there's a lot how I feel about this coin and that coin. Guys, if you want me to chart your coins, I know it's tricky, I, can't, I would love to get you each and every one of them. The nicest and the best deal that I have for you guys at the moment is to do the following. Head over to the Discord. Click on the services channel. Go to the enter giveaway button. Peter, can you just remove the prime uh, banner there at the bottom of the screen? Uh, maybe I need to zoom. Maybe I can zoom my Discord so that it also looks better. Go to the enter giveaway. Okay. Once you've clicked on it, it's going to ask you to enter. I'm giving away access to the Crypto EMC Club membership. Click on the enter button. Open your account. It's going to create a private chat channel. Open your account using our partner link. The screen will look something like this once you clicked on it, okay? And then what do you do? Fund it with $100, just $100, and send me your email. And this puts you into the draw. Now, yesterday, Mr. Saul Goodman, the, the email that was drawn. Let's see if Mr. Saul Goodman is live on the stream today. Well, I said this guy's got a really cool name. And funny enough, the email was Mr. Saul Goodman. So if you're here, just give me a shout out. <laughs> and uh, today I'm going to pick another lucky winner that did just that. So I've got the randomizer on. So let's let this thing run. And today's winner is yanchijoseph at gmail.com. So if that is your email, buddy, make contact. And I will also shout out to you in the Discord. You have won yourself access to the Crypto EMC Club that has access to all the following things. Let me show you. Uh, if you go over here and let's just get this EMC Club role. It gives you access to the investment report that I did. And this morning, I spend another hour with everybody with the latest investment report. Now, after it's timestamped, you'll get all the list of the coins that we go through. And, uh, and that's it. So congratulations to, uh, I, I, don't, I hope he's on the stream, whoever won today. And in addition to this, also you get access to the 24-hour Crypto Harmonics bot that drops trades in real time as they form. Uses harmonic setups. So basically what it does is it looks for ratios within the market and then provides you with a, with a specific setup. So open your Prime account today, fund it with $100, and uh, come join me in the crypto side. All right. Now let's get to these alts. Two coins I think is going to change your bank balance drastically. The first one is Manta. Now it launched with an insanely high market cap. So I don't think that this thing can go 10,000x because it's already at 700 million. So if you have a look at the market caps, we're already at 700 million and we're only getting started. So you remember now, for this thing to double in coin value, roughly the market cap needs to go to 1.4 billion. So is there trillions and trillions of dollars ready to go into Manta? I don't know. It doesn't make sense for me that that's going to happen. So potentially, I don't think that this thing's going to go a thousand x but it might 20x i've got it in the 20x 15x it might be in that area there now what do we have at the moment we've just launched it's just launched it's on binance so what do you need to do simply put get your eyes above that if it stays above that red line you're allowed to remain bullish so anything that you want to buy as long as it stays above that initial closing price you should be good now, the daily time frames from a trader point of view doesn't really suit the, uh, that type of strategy or buy setup. So I'm just going to humor you guys and go into the four-hour time frame to show you the following. So if you look at this thing, this is what the retail will be looking at. They'll be looking at bearish trends like this. And it's broken out, so what will price do? Potentially go to the next ray and then find some sort of a support and go further. And that means what do we want to do? 
the candle that makes the higher high. So it's a really tricky one with this one because the four hour time frame doesn't really give me the right data. So let's go 12 hour and see if we can find that. Five hour, that's why there's different time frames. Uh, it's not really giving me that. So there is no real setup for the candle that makes the higher high at this stage, guys. So what do you need to do? You need to have your buys ready at the critical support level. So if price goes back into this area here, that's the point where you need to grab some on top. And you're buying this for the bull cycle. So you're buying this with the idea that you're going to be holding this for the next few months. Remember now, let me bring back this chart. We're in this area where the great projects, the ones that does amazing things, launches. We're in that range. So that's what you want to do. You want to buy now, and then you want to see Bitcoin go to the moon and back. And you don't care because they all have their moment right after the halving. That's when they're going to start moving. You need to buy them when they're not valuable for people. You need to buy them when they're not doing crazy things because then you're buying them cheap. That is what it means buying the bottom. Okay. And then the second one that I want to share with you guys today is Satoshi IVM. VM. So basically what this is, is layer two for BTC. Now there's so much happening in Bitcoin at the moment with Bitcoin spot ETF. So having layer two rollups build on the Bitcoin blockchain in the similar way that what happened with Ethereum that had this insanely ETH run in the previous bull cycle means that there's a lot of hype and bull potential behind this. Okay. Now there's two ways that we can look at this from a buyer point of view. You can wait for bullish divergence, strong bullish divergence, because it's just launched. It's finding, it's in price discovery. It's finding a bar, it's finding a flaw. So you can wait for this, or you can say to yourself, what I can do is I can apply my gone fit to try and time it. But remember, there's risks to try and time where the bottom will be. Okay. So at the moment, my ideal price is sitting at around a dollar eighty to a dollar thirty. Now remember, this is small caps, guys. So there is big percentages within that move. How do I get there? Well, simple. Let's go to the four-hour time frame. If I apply my little gone fit magic, meaning I'm going to take it from the top to the bottom, this is where I expect, just line them up nicely, this is where I expect price to go back down, make a lower low, and do what? The RSI to stay above it, giving me strong bullish divergence giving me what I want to see. And then the eyes would need to be above this red line. Why? Because if it gets above the red line, we can start going to the moon. Now, what looked like this? Remember Sui? When we had Sui right in the beginning, I brought you guys Sui. We were doing what? We were looking for price to go make that lower low. Once it made the lower low, you want the RSI to make the higher low, and then you want it to get above the divergence and then go. I also gave you additional buys once the trend was established around these levels. So if you're unsure, you're uncertain, you're not ready to just commit just yet, that's fine. Don't worry. We're going to be keeping an eye on these coins, and I'll be giving you periodical entries as we go. Now, here's an alternative. What if we don't go lower? Everything is hyper bullish at the moment. Well, then we need to move this to the previous low and we move this to the previous high. And it tells you that this whole zone is a demand zone at the moment. So then this whole area is a place to accumulate. Now, where can this thing go to? That's the crazy thing about this. Well, let's zoom out. Let's zoom out. Remember the wick? TP1, 50% of the wick. Let's see where we're at now. There's already 530% gains on this thing. Okay. Just to get to that. And I see this thing going way past this. So there's two great coins coming your way, guys. Um, and yeah, now let's quickly have a look at some of the other calls. I see. Uh, please check. Welcome. <laughs> what did I say? It's a crazy market, this thing. Okay. So now what? Did we miss our buy? No, guys, we haven't missed our buy. You know what could potentially happen with moves like this? This is a low liquidity spike. Okay? What, what does a low liquidity spike look like? There's one. Small market caps. It's going to do these crazy things. Don't get hyped into this. You're going to wreck yourself. Why? 
because this thing's already retraced 24% in that move. Now, if you take the bottom to the top, apply your FIB, what should price not do? Fall below the 23.6. So wait for the daily and see what it does. Okay. I'm not going to rush this. I'm not going to, I'm a negotiator. You're negotiating with this thing. That's what you're doing. You're trading. And I'm saying, I'll have it at that price point. That's my negotiation. And now it's saying, no, it's going to go any other way. Now you need to decide. Are you going to budge and FOMO in on its terms? Or are you going to wait for your terms to get met? You're the negotiator. Okay. That's the key. Right. Uh, so, yeah, keep an eye out on that. If it doesn't, it will probably then do what? Still come back down. If it's fast, it don't last. Okay. <laughs> I see Mr. Saul Goodman is in the house. Congratulations. You're the next winner. Uh, randomly picked by the randomizer, guys. Um, and that's it. That's the two coins for today. Um, coins like Jupiter, we were looking at yesterday. Let's quickly have a look at this. Same thing. What am I looking for? I'm looking for price to give me some sort of a divergence. Now, what do we have? This was the idea. Candle that made the higher high, 50% to buy it, failed. Tells you these alts aren't ready yet. They're still going on discount. Look at this chart. This is why this chart is so significant. It tells you that although Bitcoin is already, this is Bitcoin's all-time high zone, all-time low, okay, or bear market low, all-time high, bear market low. All-time high, bear market low. Okay, you've, you've got this. All-time high, bear market low. Look at where BT is, BTC is. It is in the middle of that previous range, that range that created the all-time high. Look at where the alts is. They're not even in that range yet. So you're going to get these crazy moves. And that's why you buy this on spot. You own it and you let it go. You understand you need to give it time. Now, where we're at now, what do we have? We've got a double bottom and a lower low, it's weak, bear, weak bullish divergence. Maybe it's not gonna do what I wanted to do just yet. Hence the fact that I was looking at this trend. So it could potentially go to this red line. So if you bought there, you can ladder out a little bit there because it will try and still make that divergence. And if it doesn't, it will break through and then come back and then you can buy whatever you laddered out back. The market is kind in that way. It doesn't just jump through support and resistance levels, okay? All right, that's it. Um, now, big question. Isn't Satoshi EVM that token that all the influencers dumped? And I, I wouldn't know of anything like that, guys. I tend to not look at other influencers for a reason. I need to have a clean, clear perspective of what it is I'm doing. If I'm copying somebody else, I miss the nuances of what I'm looking for. Now, if that is the case, it's irrelevant for me because with technical analysis, I'm looking at the chart and I'm looking at what the chart needs to do. So we're not hyping in and we're not being stupid about this. We're waiting for the right price and then we want to buy. If the influencers dump this, if that is the narrative. What makes us any different than an investor, an early investor that dumps on this? If you go and have a look at, let's, Let's let's do this. Let's do this exercise real quick before we sign off. If you go, because it's a really good point that you made there. If you're going to have a look at Bonk, at this stage, this thing has now gone ballistic. It went amazing and and and. And let's zoom back. Let's go here. I promise you at this stage, when we were here, people were saying, isn't this the one that's just another meme coin that everybody that got in early dumped on the users? Why? Because from that point to there, you're looking at an 80% drawdown in that little move. So it can literally be that. Maybe that's the case. But it's in that that creates the bargains. And that's what we're hunting for because I don't care about the bad in the markets. If you, if you want to find a narrative to have a negativity about something, you're going to get it about any project. I'm looking for the good. I'm looking for that. That's all that I'm trying. And I'm trying to get you guys in on a project that does this because if you go 10,000%, no matter how small your portfolio is, it changes the way your portfolio looks and the way you're going to move through the crypto market forever. So really good question. Thanks for bringing it up. And uh, I think on that point, we can actually end the stream. Um, enjoy your weekend, guys. 
Um, trade safe. Don't get trapped into BTC. Uh, don't buy breakouts in this instance because allow the market to do what? To give you the signal. What do we want to be the signal? Say you want to buy BTC at the moment. What do we have? We've got a head and shoulders. Boom, boom, and probably another shoulder. We've got strong bearish divergence there. Price failing, fell back into the previous range, got bought back up. So that's bullish. It's bullish. But at the moment, what do we have? Okay. The RSI is making a higher high. So if this move doesn't get the oomph behind it to push it further, and we start falling below this level, and maybe let me just remove all the squibbles real quick so that you can see what it is I, I mean. If price falls below this, Bitcoin will then have strong bearish divergence with hidden bearish divergence. That's something you don't want to have. Okay, that's your head and shoulders. But we're far from that. So let's not try and be too, too skeptical about this. Okay. Um, you guys have a lovely weekend. Filecoin, yes. Big fan of Filecoin. It's going to do insane things. Let's see what projects are you guys in. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, yes, there's Bitcoin Cash. You called 52K on Bitcoin when it dipped to 19K. Never forgot about it. Still your opinion? Are we heading down after that? Um, this was way back there, okay. <laughs> and um, why did I call that? Let me quickly show you guys this. Why did I call that? Okay, so we're sitting in here and we're moving around 52k. And I was saying to you guys, okay, we've clearly broken trend. So if we broke trend and we broke trend again there, what do you expect price to do? It's going to go to the last time there was support for it. That's all that we're trying to do, just fill the gap. That's the magic of fill the gap. So in the future, guys, what's going to happen is that ray there is probably going to hold price up again because of the fact that that was a significant price point. So let's keep that line in there. Something interesting is going to happen. And yes, then it fell. It fell all the way back. But remember, you're only as good as your last call. The fact that I got you guys these buys means absolutely nothing to you at the moment. It's all about where we are now. So thanks for that. At the end of the day, this is the hard one now. We need to manage and navigate the now. And uh, that's the hard point of this. Okay, let's quickly see what else you've guys got in here. Um, let's see if there's any other point. AGLD. I mean, you probably mean EGLD. Um, yes, EGLD can also do well. I think there is a different alternative to that on the market as well. Busy researching it. I'm not ready to bring it your way. And um, But yes, EGLD does have some really good potential as well for BTC. Uh, let's see what else we've got. SAVM, Manta is on my list. Yes, put them on your list. Uh, Celtis and Sui Ecosystem. Um, Terry, I'll go and have a look at that as well. Thanks for the tips, SEN Rune. You know what, guys? I basically just need to go through your comments and you'll line me up with the right ones because that's the beauty about community. You can't do this alone. And um, yeah, that's it. You guys have a lovely weekend. Uh, 33 minutes in, around about the time we need to, to call it. Um, trade safe, my friends. And uh, see you in the, I'll see you on Monday when we're going to be talking how this price action happened over the weekend. Cheers. And I'll remember, keep hustling.